Hey Sod people, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to remove an alternator and take out the bearings and replace them. So the alternator is under the car, located right here. Uh, this is a particularly difficult job. I've done it before though. Uh, I actually have the bottom bolt that's supposed to be right there snapped off and the upper one is a pain to get out. The first thing we need to do is remove the front wheel. The next step is to drop the bottom control arm by removing this nut and this bolt. For reference, that's a 16 millimeter on one side and an E14 on the other. Now we're gonna go ahead and pry it out. You can go ahead and tug on this real hard. Let's pull. And you should be able to remove your axle here. There. Now the axle's out. Now what we need to do is remove the serpentine belt here. Half inch breaker bar right there on that square dead center of the screen. And as you see, when you pull it this way, it loosens the belt and you can pull it off with the alternator. Go ahead and unplug it. The bottom one should come out with no issue, this bolt right here. The problem is this upper one here. Uh, what I actually had to do was bend the bolt over when I had it halfway out and then pull it. Once you have the alternator pushed out of the way, you can go ahead and remove this inner alternator bracket. Once you have that done, there is also right there to pull the wire off the alternator. Once all is said and done, you can go ahead and pull your alternator out from this hole over here. So you can see what I did here to modify this so it goes back in easier. Take a sawzall, cut in flat here, and then cut down this way. A quarter inch to an eighth inch of the aluminum that this is made out of is what's stopping that bolt from coming out easily. So that's what I did to modify that and make that easier. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and take off this pulley and I'll show you how to replace the bearings inside as well. Okay, so this is the uh, 67004 uh, tool kit. I just got it from O'Reilly's. You can also buy something similar online. It's just a alternator uh, pulley decoupler kit. Now I'm just gonna take a Phillips screwdriver, go ahead and put it in the hole here and pry like this. There we go. Now that's off. We can find which tool fits our inner pulley. Probably gonna be the one that's already all set up for us. Yep, it is. And then this is the proper size for the outer. Perfect, the tool was already all put together for me. So with this tool, while the pulley's on, it's sitting on there like this, as usual. Um, you put this on here, just like that and you tighten with the impact. The impact turns to the right and you take a 17 millimeter wrench and you hold the wrench still. You hold the wrench still and that will turn the pulley to the left because it's turning the shaft to the right. And the going left is what loosens the pulley. So have a wrench on there, hold it still, put the impact on tighten and this will come off. It is correct. It takes a little bit of vibrating to get it to go. To start, take an eight millimeter ratchet. Go ahead and undo the four bolts that are around the casing. Here, here, other side, other side down here. Next step really, really sucks. Take a screwdriver and you have to undo these or Phillips. Be really careful not to strip them out. They will very, very, very easily strip out. Now we are going to go ahead and take apart the rectifier bridge. So go ahead and grab a Phillips screwdriver, undo this, and then get a, a socket to undo both of these. Go ahead and undo the uh, Phillips, all the Phillips that are on top of here to uh, remove the rectifier bridge. All right, this next part is really when you enter the point of no return. So don't go further from here if you don't think you can handle it. This is not easy stuff. Split the casing here, and it's gonna actually pull these little pieces of copper out from between these pinched areas. Take a tiny little flathead screwdriver on all these connections. I'll show you an easier one. Put it between the two prongs and twist very gently once it's in between them and it will pull it apart, and it will pull them apart something like this.
start splitting the rectifier bridge from the casing. I'm just taking a pry bar and I'm gently going around and tapping it very gently with a hammer, making sure none of these connections are snapping or breaking or anything. And if they're getting stuck, I'm hitting them with a little tiny screwdriver and prying them back up just a little bit. But honestly, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, if things are getting stuck and are corroded, go ahead and hit the uh, rectifier bridge with some electronics cleaner, which we'll do in the end anyway. Other than that, it's all split the case on. The last alternator I did this on, I didn't have any issues, but in splitting this one, finally I got the case off of it. It actually snapped off part of the other side here. As you can see, there's uh, pieces broken off here and here. It's supposed to look something like this. Now, it'll still be functional, so it doesn't really bother me a whole lot. All right, I've grabbed myself a simple three jaw puller and it's gonna go ahead and push the shaft out. Now that that's all disassembled, we can go ahead and push this front bearing out and take off this bearing here. Now to get the bearing out of the front, go ahead and just take a large socket of some type, throw it on the top, take a hammer. Here's the old bearing. I'm gonna take some electrical cleaner and uh, go ahead and clean that up. And when you're hammering this, do make sure you're hammering it from this side, not the inside, because there is a ridge on the inside that you will destroy if you do it backwards. Grab an oversized socket and fit it over. This is an inch and five sixteenths. Then just tap it in with a hammer nice and straight. In case you were curious, this is the one that's bad here. The one on this side of the shaft. You can hear it. Bearing shouldn't make any noise at all like this one. A small pair of three jaw pullers, put it on the back here and uh, pry. We are gonna go ahead and get this thing rebuilt here. This right here is super worn down on yours. I'll show you how to take it off in a sec. And the kit comes with a brand new one. So to take it off of the uh, rotor, you need to heat up the two contacts here and here on uh, one side with a soldering gun and that will heat up the wire that is right here it'll be over this shaft then once it's heated up take a little pick and just pluck the lines off you can see they're hanging out right here you just pluck the lines off and uh, then grab a flathead screwdriver and smash it underneath the hammer and pry upward until it pops off. And that's really it. Take your new one and you're going to have to uh, press it on at the correct um, angle here. There's only one way to do it that's correct. So you slide it on and there's two little sleeves here and there's two little sleeves on the inside. You have to match them up. And then I'll go ahead and just take a rubber hammer and smash that down really gently. I'm going to bend these electronic connections here out of the way. I hammer it until it's all the way seated in. Hammer it until it's seated in all the way. There'll be a little recessed area that it has to sit in. And once that's done, go ahead and take a little screwdriver or a pick, and you're going to want to pry those little wires back up onto those uh, metal uh, fins that hang off of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. It should be contacted to the metal. Hope you can see that, I'll zoom in. But they should be contacted to the metal now and you're gonna have to hit that and put some solder on there. Put in this bracket, 
there'll be a side with uh, screw taps sticking out the back. You want that away from the bearing. Now we can put the rotor back in. This little plate here that falls off, it, uh, the smaller ring and a bigger ring, the bigger ring goes towards the outside over the front of the regular shaft you tap it on. So on this cover, the black part that broke, you just pop it out like this and it, your kit that you buy with the bearings comes with a new one. Um, so don't worry about that. And when you're putting the new one in, there are two prongs on top of the cap sticking up. And then there are three little prongs inside the cover here, here, and here. You want to line those up. And when you're done, part here with the hole in the front should be directly between these two prongs that stick up. And you can go ahead and put this cover back over. I want to make sure your wires here are straight so that they can go through their corresponding holes. One, two, three, four, five, six sets of wire. And you want each one of those wires to go through one of the one, two, three, four, five, six holes as it's being set down. So once it's straightened up, what you can do is go grab your bolts and start putting them back through and it'll pull the cover together. And as you can hear, there is barely any sound at all when this spins instead of the terrible grinding that it was making. So there's going to be six points of contact on these. There's already some that have wires sticking out like this one, which you can leave alone. The ones without wires sticking out, you want to stick this in between and twist just ever so slightly to get it to open up a little bit. So do that for the main six that you're gonna have wires sliding back through. Six wires will slide through the black tubes that are on the back. Now, when you're doing this, you're gonna notice that some of the wires, like this one, are sticking out incredibly high compared to this. So you're gonna to wanna to take this and lift it back up like this to where the contacts mark to where the contact marks are or were on it before. Now I obviously don't have this put on all the way yet, so I have a couple minutes to worry about that. There we go. Now, you want it to be totally flush all the way around and you want wires sticking out of each one. Go ahead and grab yourself a pair of pliers, some decent, decent pop pliers or crimps of some type and squeeze each one together over the two contacts. What I'm gonna to have to do is pull back the wires. I hope you guys can see that. Pull back these wires here to make sure that they're actually in the tip of the loop that goes around. So I'll do that with this little flat screwdriver so I don't destroy your guys' view here. And then squeeze the end of the contact until it's tight together. All right, go ahead and put in your last screw that goes through here, your last bolt, I should say. The really skinny one goes here, and this one goes here. Tighten those down, and you're ready to reinstall in the car. Sorry about the end of the video not having much explanation. My phone actually died, and it started pouring rain as I was working on the car. So uh, while I was waiting for the phone to recharge, I really had to uh, start working through the light rain before it started pouring. So anyway, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Hope this helped somebody out, and uh, thanks for watching.